Hey, it's the Scotch Test Dummies. We got us EY Japanese whiskey. Or why? EY? Test it! Why? <laughs> Let's test it. All right, Japanese whiskey. Saw this on the shelf. I picked this up. First of all, I'm Scott. I'm Bart. Just in case you didn't know. I'm the rebel. We need to do that once in a while. We sure. always forget. I agree. Yeah. Sometimes I don't do it because it's time intensive. But you'll throw our picture on with right. our name. Yeah, I know. <laughs> but you're busy. Because some people are extremely. I'm, yeah, I got kids. <laughs> so do I. Your kids are older. They're like self-sufficient. <laughs> your kids are like, hey, I made dinner for you. I'm like, what? You make dinner for your parents? My yeah. Kids? They don't do that? No, not oh, yet. Sorry. <laughs> I figure they'd be like, hey, we made dinner, clean the house, and brush the dog. What? I would be so jealous, dude, if that happened. <laughs> yeah. If you were like, yeah, yeah. And then your wife was like, and I gassed up your car, honey. I'd be like, what? <laughs> you're like, you, you're being you, like treated like a king. All right, treated like e a king, whiskey. EY whiskey. Japanese. E now here. E <coughs> We said this is affordable. Yes. Um, we're going to get into it, that. Is, is yeah, it worth let, it or do you let, want it out now? Well, no. I mean, we'll talk later. We'll talk about how much this was. This is different than... Screw cap. I love Yamazaki, right. but it's become hard to find. You can't, impossible, impossible to find, to find. and when you do find it, very expensive. Eighty, ninety dollars a bottle. Right. Or the 18-year-old, um, 450 Yeah. The Bicky's around, the Kushu is around, you're going to pay Lots. 80, the same, 70 $80 right. dollars a bottle. So this one's coming in, let half of that, a uh, good More Japanese than, whiskey yeah, to yeah. try. Right. So We'll get into the price later. We do have coin, coin 104 for the EY. Um, we use them as toppers. You can get these from us. They're $10 on the show. Um, go to the webpage. So, um, first of all, I like your shirt. Anytime you're bringing in Seinfeld. The Kramer. <laughs> yeah, the Kramer shirt where they were studying. He's only made a couple of appearances on the oh. show. The t this t-shirt's only been Oh, yeah. Yeah, times. you don't keep it on anymore. This is my Rebel show. I'd asked you because I was debating should we talk about Rogue One, but it's possible. Yeah. Some people haven't seen it yet. Because yeah. I think we should chat at some point <coughs> in time, but whenever we do that, we throw in like spoiler alert and we'll talk about it at the end of the show so those that don't want to know anything about Star Wars can tune out. We'll save that for a future episode. Yeah, we'll have to do that a month or two down the road once everybody's had a chance to see it that wants to. Yes, maybe after the video comes out because a lot of oh, people yeah. wait till that. Yeah. So, Japanese whiskey that's affordable. Here's what we don't do. I haven't tunneled into this bottle or the history of the distillery or even... Uh, the Mars, which is, I think, is a distributor. Shinshu. Distillery. It's the Mars, yeah. Shinshu Mars Shinshu Distillery. Mars. Haven't tunneled in. We've talked about that. We don't really geek out on the distilleries themselves. No. We really just focus on the juice and whimsy. <laughs> <laughs> but, like we, were, like we mentioned, uh, Yamazaki and Hibiki and Hakushu, I believe those are all Suntory. I think so. So, I mean, this is... So a different distillery right. than, than we've seen. Well, that's one thing that I really liked about it. It comes in at that lower price point, which was very interesting. Uh, it's very, at least in Kansas, it's nice to be seeing some more things come over from Japan. And at that price, I thought, cool, we got to find out what this is. How good is it? Does it compare with these Hibikis and Yamasakis and Hakushus? Um, the only thing I haven't had is a Hibiki, which is a blended. Um, but, uh, you know what? We love trying stuff from all over the world. So I grabbed this. I mean, I snatched this up so I could want to try it. One thing that we've noted when we, last year when we were doing it, and maybe the year before when we were doing a lot of the Yamazakis, they almost always do a screw-off cork. They don't mess with a cork, screw-off cork, top. They don't mess with cork. They actually use, like, the uh, plasticized little... I don't know what you call it, that sits in there and keeps the seal. And one thing they state is they believe it actually seals everything up better. So they're not, I love the sound of the poop, hmm. but they say, hey, it doesn't dry out, seals better. So that's what's going on here. Hold on. Yes. Yeah, we're back. We had some technical difficulties. That's right. Had to make sure we were getting the proper sound coming in. <laughs> well, we realized we didn't have the boom mic even 
hooked up. Right, so you might have just had the internal mic on the camera, which is not as good as our boom mic. As some noticed, with the boom mic, you can sometimes hear me swallowing or swishing the whiskey around. Slurping. Slurping, that really those... Smacking. That really offended somebody, which I get. <laughs> I don't... I remember watching it and going, ooh, I don't like hearing the, the liquid move around. But, hey, whatever. So what are you getting on the nose? Well, I've got in my notes that I've got had almost well, the first night I sat down with this almost bourbon notes, a oak, a cinnamon, and a mm. vanilla, which I, I'm not getting so much today. A little bit, but then there's a little bit of a of a grassiness in there with it as well. Huh. I get a floral perfume, and then I definitely get wood, but I put it as it it smells to me almost like wet dock wood, like when you're out at the ocean or even at a lake or something and they've got a dock that extends out into the water and it's wet a lot and it kind of gives me more of that musty musky wood i do get a hint of vanilla as i come in maybe even more than a hint so i i'm with you where i thought the same thing the wood influence is present in the nose both with the vanilla and with what i'm calling this wet wet dock wood mm -hmm. the perfume I'm not sure where I can peg that from, but it gives me a little bit of a floral, floral nose to it. So it's more that I think that wet wood that you're referring to, I get and I I, I associate that with a young young whiskey. Hmm. And I also have that the note the nose is weak. It's not a real strong nose. You really got to get up in there to find okay. it. Okay. Yeah, I would agree with that. Taste. Really kind of surprised me like this and almost dovetails in with what you just said where it feels like it's got a bourbon influence because mm -hmm. I get vanilla, creaminess, mm -hmm. honey sweet. Uh, the vanilla I state in my notes is vanilla wood drifting slowly away in the aftertaste. And that is the exact aftertaste that's still lingering now. It's almost that vanilla that you get from those dip -a stick candies. You know, the little candy stick? Oh, just stick. The, the, hard candy, yes. the hard piece that exactly. you lick not, and not stick the, in there. Yeah, but it's the aftertaste is that subtle, sweet, vanilla, candied flavor. Now, give me your three main notes you got again there on the palate. Creamy, uh, honey sweet, and uh, the, the drifting vanilla as it, as it fades into the after. I've got vanilla yeah. wood. I've got a creamy vanilla, uh -huh. caramel, and a honey sweetness Woo. and oak. Oh, look at that. <laughs> Very Bam. nice. Very nice. Yeah, I mean, just to, you can see <laughs> yeah. right there. Creamy, honey sweet, vanilla wood drifting aftertaste. Yeah. Creamy, vanilla, caramel, honey sweetness, Wow, oak. very cool. No, it's a, it is 40% if we didn't mention that. And it's it comes through. It's pretty light. Uh -huh. it's, uh, it's pretty smooth. Uh, I added a drop of water just because that's what you're supposed to do. <laughs> now, we add water just to see if it changes the nose, changes the flavor. Uh, sometimes, I actually think with this one at the 40% ABV, it's perfectly good and neat. Um, my notes, I don't even mention where I've added water into it, so I think it was hitting my perfect spot with yeah. no water added. Yeah, and I, don't get, I didn't get any change with water. Mm -hmm. Really, uh, palate stayed the same. I still get the floral. Somebody in the comments put in there what causes that floral scent. Somebody's told me once, and I can't oh, really? remember, like what kicks out those floral notes. So if anybody knows, and I know one of you out there does, probably more than one, throw it in the notes. I'd love to know. Um, we've scored this a little bit differently, and uh, I'm going to let you turn yours. You've got an 83 now. You're not giving it a plus minus kick. You just no, know. that's it. <laughs> zero plus minus zero on this one. I give this. It's, go ahead. I was going to say it's uh it's not bad. It's just it's really smooth. It's really light. There's 40. It's 40 percent. There's nothing really jumping out at you. It's not. It's not bad. It doesn't. It doesn't displease the palate. Oh no. I really enjoyed it. Mm -hmm. I really enjoyed the bourbon influence that's here. When you, I had not put that in my notes. I don't think I even fully thought that until you said it. Mm. And it feels like a heavily influenced wooded bourbon whiskey. Mm -hmm. And I gave it an 88. Yeah. It surprised me because we'll get into it in a second, I guess, when it's isn't worth it. We'll do that in a bit. But 
but it really surprised me with the price point and those bourbon notes that are in there. Um, I wasn't sure where this was going to go, and it went right down Bourbon Road. Mm. Vanilla, creaminess, uh, the honey comb sweetness wrapped with some of that oakiness, that that vanilla that slides off in the aftertaste I really like. Mm -hmm. It lingers for about 25, 30 seconds, and it's the taste of those little vanilla dip sticks, the hard candy, and it's still lingering even now. And I found it for the, is it worth it, $33.29. I wrote it right on the bottle. Which it wasn't 33, 34. 29 without tax. 33, <laughs> And that's how much it was. And if I had anything to say, pop it up to a 46% ABV. Mm. Because at a 40, it's okay. I drank this neat. I didn't put any water in it. As we just tested here, the water didn't change it. Um, if it had a little bit more of an alcohol spark to it, I think it would be even better. Um, but yeah, it, it really hit me in the bourbon side of things, I realize now. I did not realize that in my notes, just that I liked the sweetness mm -hmm. it was bringing. Mm -hmm. Now, I think it's a good introduction maybe to Japanese whiskeys. If, 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 if you're referencing the Yamazaki and the Hakushu and the Hibiki, I think they're a little bit different. Well, they hit me more like a scotch, the Sherry yeah. 18 and stuff. I mean, it feels like a fine scotch. That's definitely the influences you get. I can't remember the gentleman's, gentleman's name, um, the uh, Japanese distiller that went and trained in Scotland. And you can feel that influence. I know I can't bring the name out. Uh, but you can see that with the Yamazaki. This is something that if I had a bourbon lover and I said, you know what, try this. It's gonna if, if you like your bourbon, I think you're gonna like this this whiskey. I would I would just say if you want to try it, if you want to, if if you yourself want to try a Japanese whiskey and you haven't or you don't want to spend the eighty or the ninety dollars mm -hmm. for the big names, mm -hmm. try the EY. Yeah. I just love what it's, they put I think out. it's worth I think it's worth it's it's it's, it's worth thirty five dollars. Oh big time. Thirty three twenty nine. It's worth thirty three twenty nine. <laughs> the vanilla alone. I mean, that's why I'm saying there's bourbons that are going for $20 oh, yeah. more than this yeah. that I kind of get a similar flavor profile yeah. on. And that's what surprised me is that it that it's coming in less expensive than a lot of bourbons, but hits me in that bourbon spot, and I realize that now. So, cool. All right. All right. We're going to scotch it, you scotch gods. Slaunch you. Dummies. Dummies.